so how do we get this started? Glossophobia is a fear of public speaking. And I didn't even realize there was a term for this until I started researching for this uh, talk tonight. And my goal is to overcome it. Um, so tonight may either be, it's probably more therapy for me up here than it's going to be entertainment for you. So I'm sorry, you guys have to listen. And uh, if you want to bill me for the session afterwards, I totally understand. Um, I have, in my research, realized that there are a lot of lists and rationales and opinions and ways to get through public speaking. Um, I decided to just go with a Band-Aid approach and come up here and just try to rip it off in five minutes. Um, everybody else has an opinion about it. I'll try my own way and see how it goes. So there is an artist, uh, Eminem, and him and I have some similarities on one of his songs. You know, the, all those symptoms, you know, you get sweaty hands and heavy arms and there's spaghetti in a mom's sweater or something. I don't even know. But um, what I'd like to do is, I think that's like a lot of people about public speaking, like three out of four people in this world, or at least America, from what I could tell. My wife is not one of them. She is actually amazing. She loves to sing, dance, speak, anything in public. And it's that confidence I want to find. It's something like that. So I don't know. I went to a Shakespeare play with her that she was auditioning for. And I was very impressed just how she could do it. But I stuck myself in the back of that theater. The director saw me. He's like, nope, you got to get up here and read too. There are no spectators. So I got out of that chair and my legs felt heavy. And I was just like, you know, stomach in the throat. And oh, eh. So I get up there and I decide I'm just going to describe exactly what I'm feeling at this moment. And did that. And I guess it was raw enough and real enough that the next day I got called back for a, a spot on the play. <laughs> and I ended up having to decline it because of me. Um, <laughs> But then I realized, you know, I like, I like pie charts, too. So the three fears I could find were spiders and speaking, public speaking, and death. And I'll talk about my other fear in just a little bit. But um, I decided that you've got to step forward, just try to attack those fears and figure out what it is. Because if you have, you know, you, you try to work through them. And the more you work through them, the more of a chance there is of shedding those restraints. It's like all self-imposed. It's in your own head. And it's you know, spiders or whatever it is, it's usually in your own head, except for, I guess I could, you know, pass out right now, but I'll try not to, I'll, I'll just breathe, you know, so. But the other one is spiders, that's my other fear. And I'm trying to use that same theory as I am for public speaking, I'm just jumping into it, for spiders, but I still want to just like burn down the place with spiders. I just, <laughs> I just hate them, no matter how cute they are. Um, so, you know, baby steps, first I'll do public speaking, then spiders, and, and I'll move on from there later. Um, my own voice is another thing that I always hate. And I think more pie charts again. Um, but I hate my own voice. And I think a lot of that goes back to elementary school where like a lot of issues and problems start is like, you know, as a child in, in school. I had a real respectable um, speech impediment. And I couldn't say S's or R's. And all my classmates were really kind. They'd remind me every day. And they'd... <laughs> You know, it was playful, I'm sure. But, um, you know, and also having the name Christian Christensen, you know, my dad's here tonight, and I love my name, and there, there we are. Um, but it, there's a lot of S's and R's in there, so it was really hard to get through. And the first day of school, it would always be a long name. They'd lose an A-N at the end of my first name, so it would always be like, Christy, Christy, Christy Christensen, you know? <laughs> and with that, it was just, you know, all the kids would giggle, and I'd have to, like, kind of... You know, haha, very funny. Um, so, yeah, then we went on, like, I, I cook for a living, and it's actually a lot easier to be able to um, get up in front of people and say things that you actually have passion about and you know about. So if I'm up describing a menu item to somebody or a dish to a group of guests, I have a lot easier time doing that. So I'm trying to take that and move it into regular life, too. Um, just bring passion, because, you know, like, picturing everybody out here naked or in your underwear is, like, nice and all. But then it like brings on a whole nother fear from high school of like pre-algebra class of being called up to the board and next thing you know it's like I've got an awkward erection I'm trying to tuck into my waistband <laughs> and you know like soccer shorts and puberty are just like a bad mix in high school and so you know trying to work on I had my 20 year high school reunion two days ago and luckily nobody brought it up or they didn't say anything about it you know luckily um, but you know enough Enough of this. It's like 25 years or so later, I'm finally getting into, you know, a little more comfort zone with my voice, a little bit. And uh, I figure it's either I'll be up here and I'll have a good chance of getting through it or I'll throw up on everybody in the front row. And so far, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling better about it. So thank you very much for listening.